Okay. So are you guys able to see my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. So before beginning uh, with the session, I want to ask if you people have any kind of question related to yesterday's session or uh, anything that is in your mind related to data science or or activities related to data science or questions related to career or job opportunities in data science. So maybe some of you may not be able to ask it yesterday. So we'll quickly uh, go through the question and then we'll start with the session. Hi, Saurabh. Yeah. I am Sanmit. Uh, Sanmit Kumar Ghosal. Yeah. From yes. Kolkata. Yeah. And uh, currently, I am working in a college uh, as a computer operator. Mm -hmm. And uh, my uh, job is uh, uh, some of uh, server related and uh, desktop application related support job. And uh, how can I uh, transit my career into data science? Uh, I would say that that's a standard approach because if you are not into the core uh, programming or core uh, database related activities, you need to put an effort. Start with uh, Excel sheet and then it's gradually start working on Python and SQL. And once you are, uh, and then after that, you need to use the visualization tools or or li Python libraries for visualization and then you start learning the statistics as basics of the statistics and then machine learning so once you complete this journey or, or cover all these topics um, you know in a, in a in a deep way you can say and then you can uh, start applying for job and it, it is not just learning things you need to do project you can pick any of your so like you are working in college or somewhere so what you can do is you can pick the education database. Maybe you can pick your own college database and try to find out an insight from it. There will be a huge information uh, on that, right? And then put it, put that project in your resume and then start applying for jobs. I'm sure you will get a good calls. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I have I have some projects and uh, I uploaded this into a GitHub account, mm -hmm. GitHub repository. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Power BI, uh, I have a knowledge, uh, some of Power BI knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, completed uh, three or uh, four projects in Power BI mm -hmm. and uh, uploaded into uh, GitHub. OK. OK. So yes, so that is good. Mention all these things in your resume. That will really help uh, people to basically you know screen you, and they will give you a call on the basis of that. So it's a good that you are contributing on GitHub as well. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? I will start with the session. OK. So today, we are going to cover something about projects. I have seen a lot of people struggling with projects or they are not getting interview calls or their profile is not getting shortlisted because of project. And people wanted to do something good because the companies expect you to do something uh, that solves somebody's problem. Okay, So there are two kinds of project. Basically, the typical project, I will call it, that is basically for learning purpose. Both are both gives you learning, but they are very basic. That is being covered while you learn the technology. And the other another one is the real world. So when we say real world project, you have you you pick some problem from the real world and you try to solve using data science or data analysis or through machine learning or through AI. Okay. So companies basically, you know. They all know that the, these are the, uh, the typical uh, projects on data science. They don't want your projects from that category. They want your project from the real world category so that they know that you have a good analytical skill. You, you have understanding of business. 
you can add value to a business so they focus mainly on this part and here the problem is in this part because of data set issue we don't get data set we don't know the the you can say the problem statement we don't know how to solve that so people struggle in this part but here these are the typical project everywhere it is available you just google it you will find those projects in machine learning in data science you will find certain projects related to exploratory data analysis something related to recommender system something related to stock prediction or house price predictions they are very standard uh, projects and i have seen people with a lot many years of experience they are also doing these projects and putting it in their resume and then uh, crying that they are not getting calls or their 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 profile is not getting shortlisted so our focus should be on this side our focus should be on this side now how you can do that because most of the people so if you are a fresher that's fine you can go in this category but if you are not fresher having one or two years of experience more than one year of experience i'll not call them as a fresher okay they should pick a project from this category right so how you can do that so because you already have one year of experience when you have a one year of experience you are working in certain company that company has project in which you are associated or you are doing some work in that company that project is of certain domain so if you are working in banking it is a banking related or uh, you are working in a let's say tcs and you are working for in a in a particular product let's say pinnacle or work, working for certain bank or so your your domain is banking or let's say you are working in support you are providing support to e-commerce company then you are working in e-commerce domain so you have to identify your domain first thing identify your domain out of this domain discover problems because you are working on a particular project you know the domain you have the data set so in, in in place of discovering or or we can say yes discovering domain or discovering problems so if you are working in let's say a uh, banking project right so the problem you can say that you have a data where people are doing the transactions so what is the pro problem there may be problem related to how you can optimize the loan process how you can remove the dependency of manpower in loan process how you can find out the fraudulent transactions in the banking how you can find out the or minimize the overall ticket timing so the, this is the way you can identify problem statement so let's say i want to i have identified so i'm working on a banking i have a data set related to transactions so once you know the problem get the data set if you have a privacy issue you don't want to access the company's data you can just because you know what data your data looks like so you can similarly create a fake data which because you know that you know this data is of customers the customers are xyz the machine learning or the project is not interested in the name of the customer so you can put any name there are certain libraries in python which can generate the names also similarly there are other profiles you can randomly generate you can create um, the, if so if it if it's a banking sector you can create a transaction what is transaction you have a customer who is basically uh, you know 
doing the transaction so the amount is being debited from one account and is being credited to another account at certain time it's of certain amount so you can generate your data you can get the real data or you can generate it or fake data because nobody is actually interested in your data set but people are interested in your approach or the outcome so you get the data set and start working on it so when you work on to it thoroughly do understand understand your model or your analysis and then put that in your resume so this is how one should do or work in the real world problem and if you are a fresher that's fine you can go from this side nobody is going to uh, say that no you don't have an experience you are a fresher you just pass out from the college you can do any of these projects now let's start with any doubt in this hello hello can somebody respond yeah hello it's clear sir thank you okay now let's talk about the today's case study so one of my fr friend basically in gulf so there was a he was working in aviation industry and you all know that every industry in aviation has certain rules some rules are related to customer service or customer protection or customer rights or you can say protection related rules okay so because i am talking about aviation industry let's talk about what are the rules let me open the presentation so you here you can see in dubai in which that person was working in his department there is a customer protection regulation kind of articles we have article in our or rules in our uh, constitution similarly they have certain rules in which it covers the flight delays where the customer shall for customer provide customer care and the support is very important at any stage of the flight so we are talking about flight so in this rule what happens if a flight gets delayed by an hour let's say 10 minutes 30 minutes 50 minutes in gulf you have to arrange a refreshment for the customer the airlines has to basically so if it's delayed by less than hour you have to arrange refreshment and if it exceeds 3 hours the delay exceeds by 3 hours from the originally scheduled time of departure the airline has to arrange a meal a proper meal if it is more than 1 hour and less than 3 hours hotel accommodation and transportation transportation to and from the airport if the delay exceeds 6 hours from the original scheduled time if more than 6 hours accommodation 
and transportation. So in India also, we have certain rules related to that. So that any airline company has to make certain arrangements. And the problem with these airlines, they don't know where, where, whether their flights are going to delay or not. And this is a big issue because if I got to know before like one hour or two hours that this particular flight is going to be delayed, how will I manage these refreshments, these meals or these accommodation? It is a big task and it has a money involved and it is not just about money. You need to give a proper time so that they can prepare a meal. They can uh, arrange the rooms for the customer. So because of that, because they were they wanted to give a good customer uh, service, but they are not able to do it because of the uh, not intimation of the flight delay at a particular at a correct time. So they were not given enough time to arrange all this. So because of this, customer dissatisfaction was there. And loss of customer. And loss of business. In turn, incur loss. Big problem. Big, big, big problem. So how we can solve it? So what he did, he came to me, my friend, and he asked me that we have to do some machine learning data science to solve this problem. I said, OK, let's do it. So for that, we need data. So he arranged data for me. Right? I'll just. I'll not give you the exact details of data, but I'll just show you some of the data, what we had. So project goal, of course, we need to find out whether the flight is going to be delayed or not, or which flight is going to delay. Are you able to see the data set? Hello? Hello. Can somebody respond? Yes. OK. Now you see what this data has. This data has year over here. It has a month. So let's say today we have 2022. Month is August. That is 8. And the date is 21st, which is the day of the week. Today is su Sunday. The airline name, so there is some DL, which is the airline, like we have India Air India or SpiceJet. Similarly, there is certain airlines, DL, UA, US, FL. These are the carrier name, basically a airline name. This is the original airport ID, basically from where the flight is going to take off, the original airport. Similarly, you have a destination airport. These, these are the numbers. These are the IDs. So for each airport, they have assigned a number, assigned a ID. This is the schedule time. So as for the uh, actual, what is the schedule time, departure time, and scheduled arrival time in hours, they have mentioned. And whether this flight got delayed or not. So delayed by 15 minutes. So we have captured delayed by 15 minutes. So A, arrival, delay, 15 minutes. So on 2013, in month of May, so basically 24th May to 2013, this particular uh, airline, which is taking off from Orlando and going to Atlanta, you can see original city, destination uh, city, basically this is the origin airport, destination airport is delayed or not. So this, this, is, this did not got delayed, but here it got delayed. You can see for this particular flight. So they have arranged this data. So by looking at data, 
one can easily say so one can easily find out pattern so one way of doing it we can easily find out patterns so we have a we have the data and we can find out a pattern when we say pattern anyone who is having a little bit of analytical skills they can easily find out certain pattern like in our country there are certain airlines which usually get delayed okay so particular airline that frequently delays particular aircraft particular aircraft in particular month let's say it's a month of december or it's a month of july where we have a heavy rains so particular time period in which there is a huge de delay every year and so on certain patterns you can find out and on the basis of that you can easily predict so i have not done any data science i have not done any uh, machine learning but yes even my grandmother she can predict she i mean like i have seen people doing lot of coding to uh, to predict and doing the weather forecasting related project but actually anyone can i mean like people with a good age they can easily say that okay to tomorrow there is a high chances that it is going to rain so you don't need a fancy algorithms and all you can do it by your experience you can do it by looking at the historical data we call it historical data so similarly you can also predict by looking at these patterns easily you can predict so this is a one way but no they do, they don't want to depend on this they want some robust system right to solve this problem so what we did or how we can do that let's see to solve this pro any machine learning problem you have a certain road map so the road map says get the data then it says prepare a data so like we already got the data we have data so data can be or you can say get the data prepare the data i mean like if you have some missing values you have some outliers we'll talk about it so if you if you don't have so let's say in this data set so i i took this data from you know some source and there is a certain uh, flight for which there is no arrival time okay. very high chances people do such kind of mistakes in the data set so you need to clean that data you need to uh, remove or you need to fill the missing data so that is basically prepare a data then you have feature selection so what do you mean by feature selection in our data or in a flight aviation related data there is a, a data set that has a id so just a serial number so are you interested in serial number so if i if i have this data set and in this data set i have one column here i if i add or you say this numbers this is a serial number in our column am i interested in this no there there is no use of this feature basically or this column so you need to remove those you need to get the so out of this let's say 100 columns in your data set you need certain data which is of high importance high importance certain columns of high important value so you only select those columns so that is feature selection after that you need to choose the algorithm ml algo so when we talk about ml algo there are certain algorithm like supervised algorithm unsupervised algorithm 
so in our data data set you can say we are trying to predict the delay whether the particular flight is going to delay or not so our problem is basically yes or no whether a certain flight is going to be delayed or it, it is not going to be delayed right so our basically and we have a output we know that these are the flights who actually got delayed or these are the flights who, who did not got delayed so we have the data set this is our output variable or you can say target variable so on the basis of that we need to choose an algorithm so for understanding purpose we will choose one of the classification algorithm so you can choose classification if you are doing predictions let's say house price prediction or stock price prediction you don't have to use classification there you have to use regression algorithms so we'll talk it, these are the detailed topics in machine learning or in data science so i'll not go much deep into algorithms and all there is a separate sessions in our in our regular course where we discuss all the algorithms in detail which algorithm to use and why so here we are going to use one of the algorithm and after that we will train our model so what is training basically uh, like like in our example by looking at patterns i was able to do some sort of a prediction so looking at the data is basically training for me looking at the historical data so our instead of i or or a human looking after looking at the historical data our computer will look after the training uh, our data set now after that we will do model evaluation so what is evaluation basically you have a model you are able to predict a delay but will you give this um, your software or system to people directly and they will start using it so what will happen if i if i develop an app which uses this uh, uh, machine learning model that predicts the flight delay i entered my flight from india to us from a certain airport to uh, to certain airport and if it predicts your flight is going to be delayed i will stop at home but actually your flight did not get delayed it actually clone at a, a scheduled time so in that case what will happen i will again lose the customer the customer will sue me sue the airline so you don't want to uh, want this thing to happen you want somewhat correct prediction so for that evaluation of a model is very important you need to evaluate it basically it's a testing of your model whether the the, the evaluation whether your model is predicting correct or not so you need to work on that so basically model evaluation or you can say scoring so once you are sure that okay my model is somewhat doing the predictions uh, perfectly or we can call it accuracy it is giving a good accuracy in that case what you do you go for the deployment so basically you create a system so that other people can use it so when you deploy it you can create web applications you can people can log into website and they can uh, put their flight details and your model will give them uh, whether the that particular flight is going to delay or not if it in a very good ui you can do that you can create mobile applications or you can create other uh let's say <clears throat> other systems like if you want to give this information to some uh travel integrators like go ib go or or make my trip so you can give them through apis as well right this is also called as inferencing in machine learning terminologies this is also called inferencing so you can do that this is a deployment so this is a basically a roadmap how you can do a machine learning project starting from data to model deployment now this is a theoretical part how will you do it you need computers to do it you need programming language to do it or you need 
things to do it right so for that you can do it you can do it in your local computer or your workstation but the problem with that because this training looking at historical data you can imagine if i have to do stock price prediction those stock uh, exchanges are in existence for since ages they are there for like three decade two decade 150 years so you cannot look at the data uh, in your computer you need a smart computers you need a computer with a high compute power high cpu and the ram uh, and the uh, and the processing power and the storage power so you can do it in your local computer if it's a small data but in real world this is not the case you need certain high performing computer so one approach is you purchase all those big computers but they are huge they are costly they cost billions of dollars so instead of doing that what i can do i can use cloud so cloud is nothing but there it's a set of computers with a set of services that you can utilize it and you can give you need to pay only for the for the time or for the resource that you actually you are using so it's like a pay per use and why in machine learning people are preferring cloud because they are not sure whether their model is going to generate a business or not whether this model is going to help them in their business or not so it's just a research kind of stuff that is why people call it data scientists people do research on the model if they they may be successful they may not be or if they purchase all those big computers super computers and invest billions of dollars and if it did not result into something there will be a huge loss so that is why people go to cloud now let's talk about the cloud so cloud as i say pay per use consists of resources we can say computers and services so if i have if i need to do something i will not buy new laptop or new servers i will just use those services and whatever the time and whatever the number of services i will use i will pay accordingly so these clouds are provided by various companies you all know aws from amazon you all know azure from microsoft you have gcp from google and there are other cloud providers also like digital ocean and uh data break so so many other cloud providers are also there but we will not go into detail of that because it's a more related to data data engineering so if you are interested in data engineering then you can go to this now when you talk about data science or machine learning in these cloud will will choose azure you can choose any of these uh, aws or gcp in azure you have azure machine learning studio studio or you can say basically services right so we will be using it now let's talk about or i'll show you how this i just go to azure.microsoft.com you can create your account so you can create your azure account using your email you need email and you need payment method it could be credit card debit card but in most of the countries it only support the credit card why they use credit card so that if you mistakenly use any of the resources they will charge you they will automatically deduct money from your credit card so you have to use this but 
for a beginner you don't have to pay why because initially for a month one month they give you free subscription that is basically 200 dollars free subscription which is sufficient in your machine learning learning basically in your all data science journey but provided you need to utilize those credits in one month so you need to put a lot of efforts for one month otherwise you have to pay for whatever you do in azure or in aws or in gcp every cloud has their own terms and condition now how you can create an account so this is your azure.microsoft.com try azure for free you can go here and create your free account if you go to the free account you will see the, that popular services free for 12 months there are certain services which are um, free there are certain services which are completely free but whatever we want to use we have to start with azure 200 credits and that is valid for 30 days so without going into or you can pay as you go here also you need to register your account so i'm going to simply log in with my account so here you see because i already have an account you can see this is the uh, basically dashboard where it gives you all the services okay there is azure machine learning azure machine learning studio these are all the services that you can use it is not just related to machine learning there is a lot of things like a storage account or you wanted to do analytics you wanted to create a data warehouse or a data lake all those things you can do in this azure cloud platform but our area of interest is machine learning or data science now let's talk about our problem state So you all know this diagram where the roadmap is get the data prepare the data teacher select selection choosing the right algorithm training your model evaluating your model and then model deployment this is what basically we have to do on the data which we have this is our data related to flight delay prediction now let's come to this part. how we will do this or we'll talk about Azure machine machine learning. So whatever you do, you have a data set. You have uh, you need to prepare that data. You need to uh, choose the algorithm. You have to train your model, and you have to deploy your model. You have to do a lot of things, right? So all these things if i am a machine learning engineer i may not just work on one project there may be two projects three projects so like in eclipse if you have an experience of uh, eclipse or if you have an experience of netbeans java or there you have a workspace in the same way in azure also or azure machine learning you need you have a workspace where you store all your things i call it repository not that the git kind of repository but it's a repository we call it azure workspace or machine learning workspace in this workspace all your data reside all your model reside all the training part all the logging part everything resides here in the workspace now in this workspace obviously these are the workspace they that reside in some computer okay so for that you have computers so one computer is a single computer we call it compute instance so we need a computer we need a workstation in the azure cloud platform in which we will create our workspace where we will be storing all the things so you need a computer instance so it's a it can be a single computer instance or it can be a group of computer instances so we call it compute cluster or cluster instance why we need cluster 
because in some situation your data is huge right let's say stock price prediction every day we have thousands of companies thousands of uh, price fluctuation every second so imagine the kind of a data there is in the stock market so you it is not possible or humanly not possible to store all the data in just one single computer instance you need multiple computer instances so basically we would use clusters for that so a cluster is nothing but it's a group of computers so there we have single computer let's try to make it more beautiful we have single computer or we have group of computers so this becomes your cluster and we call it managed resource so all these computer data everything is a resource for cloud so managed resource and as you know we need a data get the data so where you will store that data like you have i have this csv file that contains flight details so it's a data so i need to put that data in the data store so there is a data store in uh, in azure this data store can be blob data file data or sql data or any kind of data so we call it data store and similarly while you are doing a training you need a, again a computer so we call it compute instance so this is for storing everything this is for basically training and and deploying so you need compute instance this is called linked services this is your linked services why because you are linking to databases you are linking to other computers so we call it linked services or uh, you know basically they are the linkages to external resources now you have other thing called assets so what are this asset basically you have now these computer instance they have inbuilt machine learning related libraries installed in it like you need python you need tensorflow you need scikit-learn you need pandas all these libraries are already available in these computer instances you just choose it you don't have to install like in normally machine learning what you have to do you have to write pip install and all you don't have to do it over here so that we call it environment in asset we have environment so all the dependencies and everything will be there in this environment whenever you do some work on the machine learning in azure we call it experiment then you have pipelines so start to beginning you create pipelines so like getting the data transforming the data training the model everything it's a pipeline basically then you have data set all the data set you may require one or more than one data set files everything so for that you have data set and then you have endpoints so basically the deployment where i was talking about you can create mobile apps you can create web application how will you will give data or or how will you feed the data on those application and do the prediction you have to use the endpoints so endpoint is nothing but an api so i am not going much into detail about the apis you all know apis right so you have to create endpoints or api all this thing is called assets all this is asset right so in machine learning you have link services managed resources you have workspace where you store all the assets okay so this is not just what you all other need other things like so this data set it can be stored in a csv it can be stored in file or blob so in azure everything related to storage comes into azure storage
So there is Azure storage where you store all your CSVs or SQL. Then for deployment, you need containers. If you know Docker or Kubernetes, so you need containers for deployment. So basically container registry is there in Azure. Then all this work or the APIs, you cannot just create and uh, provide it to customers or provide it or give it open access. You need a security also. For that, you have a key vault. And you have app insight. So what this app insight? Let's say you created a, um, um, or you deployed a model, machine learning model, and people are using it. You want to monitor the performance or your mo model or performance of your data set or performance or your APIs. For that, you have app insight. So this is also a part of your machine learning on Azure. So you have Azure storage, you have container registry for deployment, you have key vault for security, and you have app inside to monitor your model. Okay. So what we discuss, we discuss about manage this, we discuss about workspace. It is a basically a repository that stores everything about your machine learning. You have managed resources, you need computers to store all this. You have a data store where you store all your data and pick data from those or data stores. So you have linked services. Similarly, you have assets. In the assets, you have environment, experiment, pipeline, data set, endpoints. And you have Azure storage account. You have complaint, com uh, container registry. You have key vault. And you have app inside. This whole thing is called Azure machine learning architecture. Azure ML architecture. So this is Azure ML architecture. So you can see this is the diagram where you can see that you know you have workspace, you have link services, you have assets, you have managed resource, you have these dependencies. Basically, Azure storage account, Azure container registry, Azure key vault, Azure application inside. So all this is called Azure machine learning architecture. Now let's dive into the actual project. Any doubts so far? Hello. Hello. No, 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 no doubts. Okay, is it is it going good? Are you guys able to understand? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, yes. Great. So if you find any kind of doubt, uh, you know, in between, you can interrupt, no issue, right? We, we, I want you to learn all those things. It's fine if even if you interrupt me. Okay, now let's do something on this Azure. So right now, because I have already used my free credits, I am into pay as you go subscription. So you can. Uh, but for you, if you are beginner, if you are a starter, you don't have to go for pay as you go. You can go for the free trial. Now here, I, I can, here you see, this is a search bar. Here I can simply do the search related to anything that I want to do or any service of Azure, I can search it. You can see a lot of services are there. So I'll go to Azure Machine Learning. I will create a new So you see, this is Azure machine learning. I am creating a workspace. What I am doing, I am creating a workspace. So while you create this workspace, your subscription you will get over here. So this is pay as you go. I'll click on to it. You need a resource group. So what is a resource group? You basically, you know, uh, I I have I'm working on a banking domain. I will do machine learning also. I will do database also. I will have web application also. I have a mobile application also, which is catering to services. So a lot of things are there and I will do everything on the Azure cloud. So for that, you need to create, you need, you logically group the your resources. So we call it resource group. I will create one. 
you can select previous one uh, but i will create a new one i will call it azure ml demo rg rg stands for resource group azure ml demo rg so this is my resource group you need to give the workspace name so i will write azure write delay workspace demo workspace wsp workspace now where you want to store all your all your data in which region there is many regions out here you can write east us east asia everywhere they have a data centers so i will use the default east us and then you have a storage account so remember this architecture you have a storage account you have a container for deployment you have a azure key vault for keys and you have azure app inside so it will by default create storage account for you key vault for you it will create applicable application insights for you you can change the name you can if you want to give some logical name you can do that but for now i am just going to keep it as default and you don't go much into detail of this we will just review and create so i am going to create my workspace it is going to take some time so you have to be patient with it so it will test whether whatever the details you give whether they are correct or not if it is correct it will say validation passed and then we can create our workspace so it is creating workspace great so it has created workspace the deployment is in progress so it is a machine learning service basically azure machine learning service It usually takes some amount of time. So you see here, it has created my resource group and everything. I can pin it to dashboard if. If uh, tomorrow also I want to work, I can just pin it to my dashboard. And here I can go to resources. You can see these are my storage account they have created, vault they have created, other component they have created, workspace they have, they have created. Now I'll go to resources. When I so you you can see that from here I am going to go to resources. When you click over here, you will see there is a lot of things right now out of this you need to work on your azure machine learning studio so here you will see studio web url so i'll click on to it i'll select my account and this is my basically azure machine learning studio so i'm going to do all my work here in the azure machine learning studio so what we are going to do, if you see our diagram or our roadmap, what we have to do? We have to get the data. So first thing that we have to do, we have to get the data. So in the Azure Machine Learning Studio, <coughs> here we talk about data. So here you see in the asset, we have the data. So I'll go to data. Here I, in this workspace, I don't have a, any other, any data. So you have to create data. So now you can see there are various options available from local file. If you have a, if you have a data in CSV, you can do that. If you have a data in SQL or in MySQL or in any other database, you can use from data store. Or if you have a data online in GitHub or in somewhere other, so 
so you can pick from the web urls also or from open data set so what this data set is by default microsoft azure machine learning studio they have a predefined data set so like mnist data set or stock data set or house price prediction data set so they have already stored some data in their computer so you can use that from the open data set we call it as open data set right so i, I already have a csv file so i'll go with the from local files so i'll here you have to give the name of the data so i will call it flight data it's in excel so it's a tabular if you want to give some description you can give it i don't want to give it <coughs> Here, it is going to put that data in the storage account that basically a blob is stored. And here I have to select my CSV file. I'll go to browse file. Here I have a slight delay data. It's a 16 MB data. So this is the file name, this is the size. And I will go to next. So it is uploading my CSV file from my local computer to the cloud. it's uploaded status is succeed now this is the file format and this is my data so you can see now it is showing me all my data from the csv file in a nice format you have year you have month you have day of the week and the um, date of the date of the month day of the week you have career you have position airport destination airport uh, scheduled arrival time scheduled departure time delays cancellation lot of things are there so you can just go to next you can see there is a data type also if you want to change data type of any of your data or column you can do that you might have observed or you might have faced this issue that you know while importing a data there is a large issue with the data types you know you import the month and you actually basically month is integer but when you import it becomes a string so you can do the data manipulation data transformation from here from one data type to another data type so you can do it easily so i'll go to next that gives me an information that this is the name of the data this type of the data and file format is it a, this is a csv comma separated csv the encoding that this file is using the data store where it is storing this csv and this is the path so i will create it so now flight data set created successfully it may take few seconds for this list to be updated so this is the data i can click on to it i can again see here you can see if i want to if if you want to access the data using programming you can simply use this in your python notebooks or you can load this data in your pandas data frame so we'll, i'll not go into details of pandas and programming in python we have a separate sessions on it you can explore this is the data you can profile basically it gives you all the data analysis like it gives you the, the count the mark basically plotting the min max count basically it's a description of data where you have mean standard deviation variance skewness pertussis you know, one first quartile second quartile so all this data you can see and you can visualize so here you can see that you know we have uh, maximum flights from the wn airline or we can say there are three airports where we have the large number of flights um, originating from 
you can find out the pick hours we have where we have the large number of flight departures or the arrival so you can see a lot of flights are not getting delayed but there are certain number of flights that are delayed getting delayed so these are the origin city maximum flights are originating from the chicago so all this you know by just you you have we have not written on any piece of code but we are able to visualize everything in just one book and if you start doing this in jupyter notebook you you can imagine the kind of a pain you will have but here you can easily do this so this is called profiling all those things you can do when we talk about the data set now let's go to the second part preparing a data yes we already prepared it we already uh, saw the data types we we did not change any data type because it's in a correct shape second comes the algorithm feature selection and all those things so what we are going to do we have to create a pipeline so here you see this is the pipeline or here you see the designer you can do this from the coding also you have a notebook you can do that using the coding if you, the, even i also love coding only i do machine learning only through code but for now for understanding purpose one can do it in the design so i can create click on the designer and here you will see already we have a lot of models and lot of things but i will use blank one easy to use pre built component so in the designer what i have to click i have to click on the easy to use pre built component so this is our basically you can say that this is our designer and here we have to create a pipeline and now what i am going to do i have to create data so what i am going to do i am going to sorry uh designer my pipeline and here i will search for data So here I'll give the name flight. So here you see we have a flight data that I have created on today, August twenty first. So I'll drag this. So this is my flight data. So from this designer, we go to this data tab, and in the data tab, I'll search the name of my data because if you just search for data set, there is a already a uh, default data set so instead of using that i want to use my flight data so i'll search for flight data and then i will go to this part now in any machine learning you basically split the data why we have to split the data so let's say if i use all this data to train my model how will i evaluate whether my model is working fine or not so to validate what i'm going to do i'm going to pick some some rows from this data set let's say i pick these five rows and after and i will remove those five rows i'll keep it separately and once i'll train or i'll prepare my model i will test whether because i know in these selected rows i know that this is the flight it did not got delayed this is the flight got delayed so i will put all the values of this particular row and i will not put a uh, actual delay column and i will see what my model is predicting whether my model is saying it is going to delay or not if it is says delay and i will check this column actual delay and if it matches that means my model is performing good my model is giving the correct output and if it gives not delayed but actually it got delayed in that case we will say that my model is not predicting correctly so you have to validate it 
that is so that picking of some amount of data from the actual data set is called as test data so we will divide our data into two parts training data set where that data will be used by our model and the testing data set so how will you do that you have to split the data so there is a split component these are all called component so i will have a split data component i will drag it now you see it has these dots you have to connect these dots so i'll connect it so when you connect it what will happen it will have training data as well as testing data set okay now once you have this you need to give the parameter how you want to how many rows you want to pick i want to pick only 30 percent of the row so for that what you have to do you have to go to settings here and here you have to give the fraction so 70 percent of my data will be training data set and 30 percent will be my testing data set so you have to give the fraction in which you want to do this now you will see all this data storage, this splitting of data require computer. So here you see, you need a computer instance or compute instance. So I will select compute instance. What I have to do, I have to go to settings. I have to go to select compute instance. Usually you will not find the instance. So you have to create it. So I'm going to create one instance. I'm going to name it which computer you want you can select any one of these with low charges here you can see this is a standard computer that is two cores 14 gb of ram and 28 gb of storage so i will select this and it is going to cost me 0 0.08018 dollars per hour so i will name it demo workshop flight delay computer you can name anything So I have selected this. It is going to be created in East US. This is going to be a CPU or GPU. If you are working on images and you want faster training, you can use GPUs, but it is going to cost you more. So I'm going to use the CPU and that too from the recommended list. You can choose any other computer as well. And I'm just going to create it. So now you see it is creating my computer. That is the name of this computer is Demo Workshop Computer, creating a standard DS 11 V2. What is the configuration? It is having a two virtual CPUs, two core and 14 GB of ram and 28 gb of storage and it costs me 0.18 dollars per hour so it is going to take some time so why we need this computer in the diagram also in the architecture also i mentioned that you need a computer to store all this data Now the mean, meanwhile it is creating a computer now what do you need to do now after this split what you need you need an algorithm if you go to our diagram after this you need an algorithm so here we have an algorithm so for that what i'm going to do because we are doing the classification we are going to use logistic you can use any other classification also but for demo purpose i'm going to use Two class logistic right. classification. Or two class logistic equation. So now <coughs> this is my model, and here you see in this model you have untrained model. 
so you need a train you need to train your model in this data set so this is untrained model you need to train it on your data so for that i'm going to put a train component so here you have a train model so in this here i have to connect this untrained model and here you have to current uh, give the data set and now you need to give the parameters if i go here so here you see i need to give the pattern parameter what parameter i need to give the target variable what what i want to predict i want to predict the delay so for that you need to give the delay column so i'm going to give the column and here which column is giving me delay this arr delay 15 it is giving me whether the flight is going to be delayed or not or actually flight got delayed or not so i'm going to give this as a label column or your target column so this is my column basically a label or target column what what value i want to predict or which column i want to get the prediction values okay now after that you need so this is a model this is your model this is your data set this is your training of the model now comes the evaluation so for that you need a score basically for evaluation basically you need a score so here on this is my model and how you will score it obviously through evaluation for that you need your testing data set so i'm going to connect this to my this and finally i have to evaluate so this is my evaluation so here in the pipeline also you see that we have get data we have to prepare data we have to feature select we have to choose the algorithm we have to train model then we have to evaluate and then comes the deployment so as of now we have done all the points till this deployment so we have not done deployment so now this is basically my getting the data training the model and evaluating our model so this is one pipeline so you see this is pipeline okay and here you see our machine is running so it is running now i can select that so all my this pipeline data will be stored in this computer and now what i am going to do i need to submit this so i have this this is a basically a design or this is basically a workflow what you wanted to do with the machine learning so i wanted to do the create a model that predicts the flight delay and so for that you have created this pipeline and you need to submit this pipeline so i'm going to submit it you have to give the name or you have to choose you have to choose the existing name so i'm going to create a experiment so this is demo ml experiment when you have created all those things are there so i'll just submit this so this is a pipeline so i have submitted it now this pipeline is executing it is going to take some time now i have done this just by doing a drag and drop so this pipeline is created and it's running so through this job detail we can see what is happening here so it has got the data 
Now it is creating a model and splitting the data. So you can see this running bars here, vertical bars. So that means my model is actually running. And here also you see the status that is running. So once it gets complete, we will go to this evaluation part. In the meantime, if I have to do the same thing through coding in Python or through other programming language, I will show you. I did that basically in uh, Python only when I was doing this project. This was the whole notebook and huge lines of code, but we have used different, different algorithms to do that. We have done a lot of plotting. You can see then we did importing the data. These are the various data set, actual, it's on actual data set, Saudi Arabian airline. These were the, the columns that I took and doing the concatenation, data cleaning, non, null value counts, observations. I need to write all these things. I need to properly document it, duplicate data analysis, data cleaning column wise, data transformation, actual data. There was a date time and also I need to find out time delays, aircraft type, what are the aircraft type I'm using, the unique flight numbers, selecting optimal columns, which is good for my model, anomaly detection, box plotting, data distribution, the central limit algorithms, theorems, exploratory data analysis. So I did a huge things to huge, huge. I mean, like it took me months to do complete this work. And you see, we were able to find out domestic or international flights, which flight getting delayed and all, all sorts of plotting. The average delay time, average. So it's a huge project that I did. I cannot. So you can see the imagine the the amount of coding is involved in it. So I have used different different algorithms to do this. And then we come up with uh, uh, I'll go to conclusion directly. So I have I, I I using this different different algorithms. We were able to achieve the 60 65 percent of accuracy on different different. So some models I have got 49, 52, something like this. So it's a so I, the idea is to show you how much coding you have to do to do this task. So use okay. So it got green signal that our model training is done. Now it is evaluation is going on. Any doubt so far? Just quickly see the evaluation and then the quickly deployment. I know it's because you don't know the basic concept that it might be boring for you or you may not be able to understand. But whatever the question comes into your, your mind after this uh, uh, demo, you can ask me. So the idea is just to give you an overview that you can do a lot of things on Azure Cloud Platform related to machine learning and how you can do that. I, I tried my best to explain you all the things uh, before going into the practical aspect uh, or, or, or re giving you the demo on real time basis. Okay, so this evaluation is done. Now I'll go. So this is the evaluation part. I can click into it and I can preview that. So I'll right click here. I'll go to preview data. I'll go to evaluation user. So you see, this is the ROC curve. 
precision recall curve, lift curve. If you don't know, know that, it's fine. You don't have to go into it. We have achieved the accuracy of 79% in our, um, um, if this model appears to be good because it, it gave me 79% of accuracy. This is a confusion matrix. So don't, don't, if you don't know all these things, it's okay. You don't need to go into detail. The idea is that our model training is done. Now let's see how you can utilize it or how you can give it to the customers. So for that, what you need to do, you need to create an API so that others can use it, right? So let's say you are a data scientist, you created this model. Now you have a mobile developer or web application developer or your company want that, create an application where the customer will come, he will in give the details of his flight. Let's say I want, I'm going from this uh, airline, from this source airport to this destination airport. This is my flight number. This is my uh, uh, arrival time and all, whatever the details he, the customer want. He will put it in the app or on, on or in the web application. And your job is the, that applications will nicely give the customer whether the flight is going to be delayed or not. So for that, uh, in the front end, you need a web application and in the back end, you need this model, running model that will give you the predictions. To connect that, you need an endpoint. You need an API. So you need to create endpoints. So for that, here you see you have this endpoint kind of thing. So you click on endpoints. Right now, I don't have an endpoint. I'll go and create. I'll name this endpoint EP demo flight delay. There are certain things you want it on Kubernetes, you want a token base, key base. So there is a lot of things involved here. We do, will not go into much uh, into the details. So it, basically, it's an API that will connect your model with the applications. Or instead of this, what we can do, we can select and go to pipelines so here you see this is when you click on your pipeline, you will find the option create inference pipeline, basically through which this also you can create an endpoint. So I'll go and click here, create inference pipeline. And how you want? You want a real time inference pipeline. So I have 10 flight numbers. I can create a batch inference. I just want to uh, give the prediction for one fair flight wise. So you need a real time inference pipeline. I'll click onto it. So when you click on this inference pipeline, the web services will be created. The APIs will be created. And every API has certain input. Like in our case, what will be the input? Like flight number, source to destination, airport, and other details, or PNR number, whatever the unique number is. So this is the input, and you will have an output. So the output will be the, the, that particular flight is going to be delayed or not. So I'll click on Submit here. I will choose the demo experiment. I'll click on submit. So the, basically, it is creating your inference pipeline, or basically, it is creating the APIs that you can use in your HTML based application or mobile application. Okay, so it is working on to it. This pipeline is running. I'm 
you can go to the job details. So it is creating the web service here. Any doubt so far till the time this is executing? I know you people uh, like session uh, took a lot of time in this session. Okay, so this is done. And once this is done, what you have to do, you need to deploy it. So here you see after this pipeline creation, we, we talked about model deployment here. So you need to deploy it. For that, you have this deploy button. I'll give this endpoint EP demo flight. So you need to give a compute name. Or we can use the we don't have an existing. So here I will use the container and I will deploy it. Again, it is going to take some time. So you see deployment is in progress. So in Azure, a lot of services take time because uh so it is again running It is going to take some time. So basically, it's an endpoint. It's an API. You can see here. It will give you give you an URL once it completely run, and the computer in which it is running. So I will delete this some issue there. Okay, it's running. So here you see the model which we created. It has given an ID to it, the creation time. It is still running. Once it runs, it will give us this endpoint that we can use. We can use Postman also to test that. Okay. 
online enforcement. Still running. Still running. It's still running. So this is a postman where you can test your APIs. So once this generates the endpoint, I'll show you how to consume that. So you can create your own simple HTML page to do that or you can use Postman or you can create a mobile application to consume that. So I'll just use Postman to consume your endpoints. So let it run. It says code cannot be generated to consume endpoint until the endpoint is healthy. So it is still working on to it. It's not allowing me to create one more endpoint. Let me try to create it. Okay, so till the time it is running, we can have a QA so that you know I won't take much of much of your time. Yes. So let it run, then we then I'll show you how to consume those endpoints. Till the time, if you have any question, you can ask that. Yes. Am I audible? Or is it like a heavy kind of a session? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 So, how much you people understood so far? Yes. Anyone who want to respond? What you understood so far or any doubt till now? Uh, hi, Saurabh. 
yeah i have no knowledge about uh, azure mm -hmm. but uh, in this session i have uh, knowledge uh, the basic knowledge in uh, azure how it works and how it uh, do this okay okay yeah it's a basic um, you know i have not uh, gone through the details or because you know it it's it's a separate big course on azure because it gives a lot of services and uh, we cannot cover all those things in three days workshop so just give you an orientation what what is the capabilities that azure machine learning cloud platform has and how you can utilize it yeah but uh, but i'm sure that it must have given you some orientations of some, some pointers and later on you can explore by your own or you can take certain courses easily if you find out that it has a potential to grow uh, you know or you find out that there is a lot of job opportunities you can just search for the azure machine learning cloud platform on linkedin or in job posting site where you will get a knowledge about it and that there is a huge requirement and uh, you know one can easily learn it and one can do that okay any any other doubt or anyone who want to contribute Yeah. Yeah, sort of. Uh, yes. So as you said, they have a couple of ways to get the pipelines using that Azure and the Python. Mm -hmm. So is it same for, can we do for all Python? Is this? Yes, 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 you can do. You can, so if you, if you go here, you will see that we have these notebooks. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So here we have a. You can create a notebook and you can uh, start working on to that also. So whatever the things that you already doing, you can do it here also. So we don't want to do Python for this. Is this the the, the question that you are asking? No, no. The thing you created the pipe data yeah. data sets. You said we can do it in Azure. Yeah. So I'm asking for this example only you are uh, showing, or for every real time project, we can do it in Azure itself. I we need to use Python also. Yes, you like 95% things you can do it on cloud Azure Cloud. Only few of the things require customization, but yes, it covers almost everything. So if I go and see the components over here. Yeah. You will see there is a huge components. You can directly you use them. Built libraries like that. Huge, huge. Yes, yes. So there is a lot of, lot of, and for each algorithm, there's a component and variations every component has a parameters you can do the, it's so behind the scene it has a code only so you pick the component it will write a code in the uh, notebook and you can download that code yeah. also it will generate the code you can use that code okay. so this pipeline this complete pipeline has a code also behind it okay. right so you can do it through coding. You can do it through this uh, flow, but it's a very nice flow through it without, because ultimate goal of machine learning or data analysis is to generate an insight. So it is not necessary. You always do coding. Sometimes you have to do things faster. You can do it through these automated tools. Okay. So it's applicable for all real time projects. Yes. Uh, yes, I hope. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. No issue. Uh, sort of. Hi. Yeah. I, uh, I have uh, created uh, some projects, and uh, can I share with you after that? Yes, after this, uh, after, I mean, not be right now because we already took uh, like almost like two hours is going to be complete. So everybody may be in rush. You can connect to me directly, maybe tomorrow or the after tomorrow. Okay, 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 okay. No issue, no issue. Yes, somebody was asking. Uh, so. uh, hi, so this is Ravi yeah. here. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I have uh, 
I have two questions basically here. The one is uh, the app insights you're talking about. Uh, so after the deployment of models, say the uh, do we get the statistics of how the model is performing over a yes. period of time? And if yes, yes, how it is. Yes, yes, yes. You have to create the app insight for that. And uh, when you create the app insight, it will give you how much the latency it has, the, how your APIs are responding, for what inputs uh, it is responding faster, or for or or you can uh, analyze what sort of devices from the re request is coming. So you can do all sort of analysis on it. It has a logs basically. You can see it has a deployment logs. It has a app monitoring logs. So from these logs, it is generating an insights. So correct me if I was wrong here. Uh, so if it is an app insights, uh, we need another instance of app insights, or it will do with an uh, existing compute resources itself. Yes, uh, it will. You know, from the existing compute resource, it will create because anyway, it has to store the logs. Only thing is, you need to enable this application insight enable here. You can say in this API, the endpoint, you can basically monitor all your uh, application related insights. What you need to do, you need to enable it. So while creating an endpoint, you uh, you have to do, you have to enable it basically. Let me try. Is taking longer than expected. Yeah. yeah. Any other question? Uh, yeah. So for the maintenance purposes, say if a model is. Uh, uh, we can say that there is a dip in model in real time uh, that we are observing. And uh, for the uh, redeployment and training, uh, we can adjust the pipelines uh, with the maintenance and uh, redeploy it, or uh, basically how it works, uh, retraining the model and redeploying it again. Yes, so there is a circle, there's a life cycle. So once you deploy it, you get more data. And that data, you can put it in the data warehouse. And later, again, you can create an incremental model you again train the data um, uh, with the new data set or it's like a transfer learning you can say the enhanced learning that you can do for your model so there is a so whatever the data comes in you can incrementally train your data existing uh, existing model okay uh, that gives a lot of information for me and uh, another query is like if, uh, is uh, 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 regarding this uh, visualization part, uh, there are a lot of visualization tools available. Uh, uh, like, say, if you want to uh, visualize some of the components uh, in real time, that can be, uh, like, say, uh, for the query, if, uh, if we give the query, uh, then it is uh, in a classification model, it may pick any one of the uh, one of the class. And uh, if you want to observe the future importance for that model that we get through App Insights, or we need to uh, do some extra additional pipelining methods to get those uh, visualizations for us. Okay, so one thing is you have the data, you want to visualize it, okay? Mm -hmm. From the directly from the data. And the App Insight is related to your uh, deployed services, you know, how that service is working. So App Insight is all about that. But if you're talking about visualizing your existing data, you need to use visualization tools or there is a components like when we imported that uh, flight delay data, you must have seen all those charts, all those of mean mode, standard deviations for each column and how the columns are correlated. All those visualization, you can get it there. And also you can use the notebook to do the visualization. And there are other tools as well in this cloud platform only that will help you in visualizing the your data set, not your app. So app is basically, which, um, it, it gives you monitoring or it gives you a dashboard related to your API consumption or performance or you, of your API, um, you know, while it is integrated with apps or web application for the customers. Uh, got it, thanks a lot. Yeah. Mm.
Okay, I will create one compute here. Problem was uh, with the computer, like the compute instance that I created was a, was of a small RAM or a small hard disk. So now what I'm doing is I'm creating one inference cluster, one more computer, and then I'll deploy my endpoint to that computer so that it can execute faster. So now I'll go to my pipeline. I'll go to deploy. creating uh, hi sir yeah. i have a one query yeah um, uh, algorithm must require it for uh, machine learning evol evolution. Uh, have yes, you to choose the proper algorithm for a specific ML problem? Yes. So machine learn. Um, when you talk about machine learning, it is all about algorithms because you need a uh, you need some logic. Is it what is algorithm? These are the equations. These are the logics uh, which basically predicts or find out the pattern or generate it from the patterns. So you need an algorithm. So there are plenty of algorithms, and every algorithm has uh, where to use that particular algorithm. So if you are following me on LinkedIn, you 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 may see that I have uh, shared one document where there is a set of algorithms, and what are the advantages of those algorithms? What are the disadvantages? And what are the application where you should use which algorithm? So that is very clearly given um, in that post. I'll share that also. I don't have it right now. I'll share it. Okay, okay, okay. sure. So there is a certain parameters through which you can find out which algorithm is suitable in this uh, problem domain. Yeah. I always follow your LinkedIn uh, contents every day. Okay, okay, okay. So there is a post for that if you can browse uh, maybe later on. Right, right. taking a lot of time just to create a machine so sometimes this cloud thing is um, pain reason being you know uh, because we are not we are not selecting those highly cost cost uh, based machine so high costing machines that is why it take it it gives a slow performance so that you can basically you know uh, get you know fed up with this slow machines and buy the 
machines with a higher compute and mem uh, the performance. So it's basically a strategy of a business. Okay, so this is transitioning, so we will be able to see the endpoint soon. And when if you if you start practicing this Azure, make sure that once your work is done, you need to delete or you need to stop all your resources. Like here, I have created one or two compute machines. I have my data set. So I, I, after this session, I will delete it. Otherwise, it will cost me a lot for every thing that you keep in these um, cloud platform, be it Azure or be it AWS, everything has a cost associated. So you have to be uh, sure, you have to ensure that after your work is done, you have to delete all your data or your resources. Yeah, any other question? So till the time it gets deployed, I can take two questions. Yeah. Anything like about me or data science or, or about you, if you wanted to share your experience related to data science or if you have some good, interesting things to share. Yeah. For creating Azure account, we need to uh, mandatory for credit card. Sorry? For creating Azure account, um, uh, uh, we need to credit card mandatory. Your voice is not clear, sir. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. For creating Azure account, do we need a credit card mandatory? Yes, you need a credit card or debit card, depending upon the country you decide or, or the, the bank you know, credit card or debit card that you're using. Some credit card for sure, it accepts all kinds of credit cards, but for debit card, uh, it may cause problem. So I have seen for SBI, it works, for a uh, few bank, it works, for few bank, it don't. So you need to check in that case. So initially, they deduct some amount or... No, no, they don't. They don't. They don't. Yeah. So don't um, uh, you know scare about the payments. For one month, it is completely free. You it won't charge anything. You only need uh, the credit card or debit card, and uh, after a month, uh, it will expire. It will ask you to renew and all. It will ask you all other related stuff. But don't worry about that. You know, it will debit a lot of money from your credit card. It won't do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now you see, I have not done anything. It was more about the Azure platform. Now it is healthy. We have got our endpoints. We can simply use it. So for that, you can see here we have a we have the tests. We have we have a consume. So you can do through coding also. You can consume. So you see here we have these. It, it automatically generates a code so that you can use. But instead of that, I will use Postman to check those endpoints. So this is the API URL. I'll put it here. You can see this is the postman. And you need the keys. This is the primary key. Here we will have the authorize the header. I'll put it as authorization. And here we will have the error and this primary key. This is a header for this post. If you people know about HTTP or APIs, this is a simple URL. And we are going to call the HTTP post method. And these are my header. And here we have a body where we will be putting a raw data. So raw data means what do you want to predict? I want to predict whether my flight is going to delay or not. So for that, you need the data. So this is the data format 
when it has a sample data so i'm going to remove all the existing data from it and i will talk about this particular flight so instead of 2013 so in my data i don't have a uh, data for today but here i'm going to put today's data for the month of august day this six this is the carrier this is the original airport and all and i want to see whether this particular flight today's flight is going to delay or not so this is the input so in here i am using a json format you can create a json from your mobile app and from from your uh, web application also and put it in uh, and call this http post method so i have given this now i'm going to send it and now when i send it it will go to my server so it says some error related to authorization maybe it is capital b or something like this okay so we got the output so now you see it has given me the result this is a web service output and for this particular flight for today and we will see it is not going to get delayed so we have got arrival delay 15 minutes is zero so that means this flight originating from orlando international to atlanta this will not going to delay and the probability you see the sport probability is 0 0.106 so this is the probability basically it's a confidence whether this this prediction is correct or not so you see we don't have a data so if, if you if i go to my data set the existing flight data set and if i go to explore i'll go to profile So you see, I have only 2013 data set. I don't have other years data set, but still I'm able to give some sort of prediction for today's flight, right? So this is how you can create, this is a deployment part that you can easily do, right? And these are the deployment logs. So whenever you call it, you see that these logs are generated and it has all the libraries, Python libraries that it is using from behind. So all those, so you see, I have just called my API and I have called from Postman. So it has all the logs and this, this is the response that it has generated. So I have all the details about uh, my consumption of this API and it has give, given me the model that I'm using. Everything is there, two label class, why to be able to pass? Because we are using binary class classification. My flight is going to delay or not delay. So this is all about end-to-end -end project uh, related to machine learning in Azure. So we, we did data, we got the data, we prepared the data, we selected the algorithm, we trained the model, we evaluated the model, and then we did the deployment. And this is your pipeline. So if I go and see the pipeline so this is our pipeline whatever we did here okay any doubt so far i know uh in the last it it, it has some uh, like boring component as you don't know as you're in detail but i believe and i'm very sure that you must have got an overview or pointers how these things work in the real life or actually companies work and this is how companies work uh, you know, a lot of companies use Azure to do their machine learning tasks. Yes. Now, I'm open for question. Any question related to today's session or yesterday's session or anything? Dipali, Atul, or how you liked it or what, what is your feedback about today's session? And I want each one of you to respond. Reason being, you know, I, I, I mean, like you may appreciate that, um, you know, um, getting up early in the morning and giving three sessions. So I expect uh, a feedback from you all. Yeah. Hi, this is Rabi. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I have done the modeling using Python uh, with, with uh, Jupyter notebooks in my native local itself. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but this is the first time I was, uh, you know, going to a lecture about uh, Azure uh, machine learning automated uh, designs and designing the pipelines. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it really well. Like uh, almost like I understood 99% uh, uh, of the tasks like which you have explained. That was really insightful to start or uh, kickstart the Azure learning for me. And I, I'm really thankful for you to uh, giving us such wonderful session. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. Yeah. The Pali. Dr. Atul. Yeah, sir. So, so <clears throat> basically, I am not, I am very new to this uh, coding and all. Being mm -hmm. a pharma background person, all technical. Mm -hmm. So, okay. like from today's session, mm -hmm. I. I came to know that this building a model from Azure is not a big thing because when I saw those Python codes, mm -hmm. uh, that is like very scary to me always. But yes, exactly. Looking at Azure, if you know the basic flow of uh, machine learning mm -hmm. and uh, handling the data, then mm -hmm. it is easy to uh, build a model and deploy. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Richa, Dipali, Saar, Satya. Okay, so you got the uh, Python access, Python basics and Python advanced course basics. Yeah, I did. Okay, great, great. Okay, so uh, we'll conclude this session, uh, today's session. Tomorrow we'll connect with some uh, something related to resume writing or what project you should do and how to write it in, in your resume. So we'll do that. So thank you for now. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed the session. Of, um, at least you understood all the concepts, uh, how things work in a cloud or what machine learning is from all this infographic or all these things. I'm sure you must have gained something new today. And uh, Let's try to connect tomorrow. Um, try to be on time tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll uh, wrap the session in one hour only. There's not much to discuss, but the but important to discuss. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, we'll connect tomorrow at the same time, eight thank eight a.m. Uh, eight thirty a.m. I see. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.